Hey everybody. So today we're going to do a bit manipulation problem. And this problem is going to be that we are going to take two integers and we're going to try and figure out whether or not those two integers differ by exactly one bit. And that another way to phrase this is that they're sequential numbers in a gray code, which is basically a number system where each, no, each successive number changes exactly one bit. So in case you were wondering. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at this example. So we have the first example, we have 0, 0, and 0, 1 in binary, right? So this. And it's pretty clear to see, obviously we'd have zeros at the front of these numbers because they're integers, but it's pretty clear to see that they differ by exactly the one bit. And then in our second example here, we're going to have 0, 1, and then we're going to have 1, 0. And these differ by two bits, right? Because the first bit and the second bit are both different. And again, there's going to be the additional zeros in the front. But we can also, you know, take a slightly longer example like this. And then, you know, we have that, this one thing to keep in mind here, which we noticed just by looking at the examples, is that if the numbers are the same, then they are not gray codes for each other, or they are not one off from each other. So, for example, these two would be valid, or maybe if I put, you know, I can change them however I want, but as long as I only change one bit at a time, they're always going to be valid. So, let's think about how we're going to actually solve this problem. Uh, the first thing that I notice is that what I'm really trying to do is extract which bits are different or how many bits are different. So the easiest way to do that, I'm going to start by XORing everything. And by XORing everything, I'm going to be able to extract a number that is only going to be, it's going to basically have a 1 wherever the bits were different and zeros everywhere else. So I can then, if I can figure out that my, once I XOR it, if I can figure out that my number has exactly one one bit in it, then it'll be easy for me to figure out whether they are one bit different from each other. So what I'm going to try and do, is, so I'm going to do that, and then let's think about how we could actually, so let's take this example, we're going to XOR them together, and then we're going to get 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. So we'll have something like this and as you can tell the result that we're going to get is always going to be a power of two because we're always going to have exactly one bit so we know just because of the properties of binary numbers that it's always going to be a power of two and so we have a couple ways and that's probably going to be our best approach for solving this or something like that we could also say that you know if we shift it it's not going to there's only going to be a one in the ones place once. That was a lot of ones in one sentence, but hopefully that made sense. Like there are a lot of ways that we could approach trying to actually figure out that there's exactly one in the binary representation. So let's think first we can just go ahead and we know that it's a power of two. So we could do something like take the natural log of this and divide it by the natural log of two and see if it's a integer value, right? Like if the log, the log of a power of two, the log base two of a power of two should be a integer value. So we could do that, but that's going to be a more time consuming approach because that's just like a more involved mathematical function. So I don't really want to do that if we don't have to, and we don't have to. So I'm going to look, there are two different ways we can do this. First, I'm going to look at if you don't, there's sort of a trick way to do it. And I'm going to start with not the trick way to do it so that you can see, you can, if you don't know the trick way, you probably wouldn't figure it out from solving the like when you're in an interview trying to solve this problem. So we'll just do it then like a more normal way first and then we'll do the trick way afterwards. So the normal way what I'm going to do and I'm just going to go ahead and start coding this up. So we're going to have a we're going to return a boolean and I'm just going to call it gray because it's our or I'll say is gray. And then we're going to take in two integers an int a and an int b. And so we're going to first, we want to XOR them together. So I'm just going to create a new integer and I'm going to call that, it's going to be AXORB. And so 
Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, I'm gonna create a while loop and I'm gonna continually shift over by one. And what I'm gonna say is that if the number is not divisible by two, then that means that there's a one in the ones place. So like both of these numbers are not divisible by two because we have ones here, which makes them odd numbers. So I'm gonna say, but then if there's a number in the ones place, there shouldn't be a number in any other place. So if there's a number in the ones place, my number should look like this, right? Because if we have another one in here somewhere, then we have more than one one. So I'm going to say that if there is a one in the ones place, then when I shift it by one, the answer or the number should be zero. And that's how I'm going to tell that there's exactly one one. So I'm just going to say that while X is greater than zero, I'm going to shift or I'm going to print an if statement. So I'm going to say if X is so if x mod 2 is equal to 1, and that's going to tell me that there's a 1 in the 1's place. And if x shift by 1 is greater than 0, then I'm going to return false. Because that is going to be meaning that there are multiple 1's. And then I'm going to shift x by, I'm going to say x equals x shifted by 1. And finally, that's... Once I break out of this while loop, then I've shifted through and I've removed exactly one, one, and then X is now going to be zero. So I'm going to return true then because I know that, that our number had, ex our X word value had exactly one bit in it. So this hopefully makes sense and we can go test this really quickly. So let's test it on this example. We come down to here, we XOR them, we get this, and then we're going to say if X equal, if F, X mod two is equal to one, which is not, so we're going to shift X by one, so we're gonna get, we're gonna remove that zero here and add a zero here, and then we're gonna do this again, so X is still greater than zero, X mod two is not equal to one, so we're gonna shift it again, and finally, we see that x is still greater than zero, but x mod two equals one. And x shifted by one is going to just be zero, 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 zero. So that's not greater than zero. So we're gonna come down to here. We're gonna shift it one more time. So we just remove this and then we come down to here and return true. So obviously that gives us the answer we expect, but there is a slightly more efficient way that we can do this. And the answer to that is that we have this cool little trick where if, we take x and x minus one, then, and this is a binary and, or a bitwise and, then this is always gonna be equal to zero if x is a power of two. And it's never gonna be equal to zero the rest of the time. And we can actually see why this is the case. So let's look at an example where x is a power of two. So anyone where there's exactly one bit set. So we take x minus 1, then we're always going to remove the highest, if it's a power of 2, we're going to remove this highest order bit, and we're going to replace it by bits in all the other spaces. So as you can see, like now there are none that actually overlap. So it, when we add them together, it's going to be 0. But let's take any other number. So let's take, for example, this. We're going to subtract one. This is going to give us, we're still going to have a one in this place here. So we're, as long as we have another value, we're always going to still keep the, like as long as we have a higher order and lower order bit, we're always going to keep the highest order one in place because the lowest order bit is going to go down. So like even if we had, this here where we had a one here then when we subtract one this becomes zero so let's say we had this and then this last one becomes zero but we're still going to have this one so it's still going to add to some value that's not equal to zero so we can just change this code a little bit and it's going to be super simple now so all we need to do is just return x and x minus one is equal to zero and that's 
all there is to it. So if you know that, or if you remember that, or if you've managed to figure that out in your interview, this is definitely a good way to go about doing it. And we can just test this code really quickly, although there's not that much to test. So let's go back up to this example we had here, where our, so we're gonna X or them. So we get oh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. And then we're going to and them together. So we're gonna end up with 0, 1, 1, and that's equal to 0. And we can take another example where let's say that these are both zero like that. Then we XOR them, we get this. And then when we and that, or so we XOR them and then we subtract one. So we end up with, we end up with one zero zero. So this then ends to this, which is not zero. And so we get the answer we expect. So there you go. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below or on the blog, and I will see you again soon.